Biopesticides, a contraction of biological pesticides, include several types of pest management intervention, through predatory, parasitic, or chemical relationships. The term has been associated historically with biological control, and by implication, the manipulation of living organisms. Regulatory positions can be influenced by public perceptions, thus, in the EU, biopesticides have been defined as a form of pesticide based on microorganisms or natural products. The US EPA states that they include naturally occurring substances that control pests, biochemical pesticides, microorganisms that control pests, microbial pesticides, and pesticidal substances produced by plants containing added genetic material, plant incorporated protectants or pips. They are obtained from organisms including plants, bacteria and other microbes, fungi, nematodes, etc. They are often important components of integrated pest management programs, and have received much practical attention as substitutes to synthetic chemical plant protection products PPPs. Topic Types Biopesticides can be classified into these classes Microbial pesticides which consist of bacteria, entomopathogenic fungi or viruses and sometimes includes the metabolites that bacteria or fungi produce. Entomopathogenic nematodes are also often classed as microbial pesticides, even though they are multicellular. Bio-derived chemicals. Four groups are in commercial use, pyrethrum, rotenone, neem oil, and various essential oils are naturally occurring substances that control or monitor in the case of pheromones pests and microbial diseases. Plant-incorporated protectants pips have genetic material from other species incorporated into their genetic material i.e. GM crops. The use is controversial, especially in many European countries. RNAi pesticides, some of which are topical and some of which are absorbed by the crop, biopesticides have usually no known function in photosynthesis, growth or other basic aspects of plant physiology. Instead, they are active against biological pests. Many chemical compounds have been identified that are produced by plants to protect them from pests so they are called antifeedants. These materials are biodegradable and renewable alternatives, which can be economical for practical use. Organic farming systems embraces this approach to pest control. RNA RNA interference is under study for possible use as a spray on insecticide by multiple companies, including Monsanto, Syngenta, and Bayer. Such sprays do not modify the genome of the target plant. The RNA could be modified to maintain its effectiveness as target species evolve tolerance to the original. RNA is a relatively fragile molecule that generally degrades within days or weeks of application. Monsanto estimated costs to be on the order of $5 per acre. RNAi has been used to target weeds that tolerate Monsanto's Roundup herbicide. RNAi mixed with a silicone surfactant that let the RNA molecules enter air exchange holes in the plant's surface that disrupted the gene for tolerance, affecting it long enough to let the herbicide work. 
This strategy would allow the continued use of glyphosate-based herbicides, but would not per se assist a herbicide rotation strategy that relied on alternating Roundup with others. They can be made with enough precision to kill some insect species, while not harming others. Monsanto is also developing an RNA spray to kill potato beetles one challenge is to make it linger on the plant for a week, even if it's raining. The potato beetle has become resistant to more than 60 conventional insecticides. Monsanto lobbied the US EPA to exempt RNAi pesticide products from any specific regulations beyond those that apply to all pesticides and be exempted from rodent toxicity, allergenicity and residual environmental testing. In 2014 an EPA advisory group found little evidence of a risk to people from eating RNA, however, in 2012, the Australian Safe Food Foundation alleged that the RNA trigger designed to change wheat starch content might interfere with the gene for a human liver enzyme. Supporters countered that RNA does not appear to make it past human saliva or stomach acids. The U.S. National Honey Bee Advisory Board told EPA that using RNAi would put natural systems at the epitome of risk. The beekeepers cautioned that pollinators could be hurt by unintended effects and that the genomes of many insects are still unknown. Other unassessed risks include ecological given the need for sustained presence for herbicide and other applications and the possible for RNA drift across species boundaries. Monsanto has invested in multiple companies for their RNA expertise, including Biologics for RNA that kills a parasitic mite that infests hives and for manufacturing technology and Prasears nanoparticle lipidoid coating Settings, and licensed technology from Al Nilam and Techmira. In 2012, Syngenta acquired Devgan, a European RNA partner. Startup Forest Innovations is investigating RNAi as a solution to citrus greening disease that in 2014 caused 22% of oranges in Florida to fall off the trees. Topic Examples Bacillus thuringiensis, a bacterial disease of Lepidoptera, Coleoptera and Diptera, is a well-known insecticide example. The toxin from B. thuringiensis Bt toxin has been incorporated directly into plants through the use of genetic engineering. The use of Bt toxin is particularly controversial. Its manufacturers claim it has little effect on other organisms, and is more environmentally friendly than synthetic pesticides. Other microbial control agents include products based on Entomopathogenic fungi, e.g., Bovaria bassiana, Asaria fumosaurus c, Lacanicillium and Metarhizium spp. Plant disease control agents include Trichoderma spp. and Ampelomyces quisqualis, a hyperparasite of grape powdery mildew. Bacillus subtilis is also used to control plant pathogens. Beneficial nematodes attacking insect, e.g. Steinonema feltii, or slug, e.g. Phasmarabditis hermaphrodita, pests. Entomopathogenic viruses, e.g. Cydia pomonella granulovirus. Weeds and rodents have also been controlled with microbial agents, various naturally occurring materials, including fungal and plant extracts, have been described as biopesticides. Products in this category include Insect pheromones and other semiochemicals Fermentation products such as spinosad a macro-cyclic lactone 
chitosan, a plant in the presence of this product will naturally induce systemic resistance to allow the plant to defend itself against disease, pathogens and pests. Biopesticides may include natural plant-derived products, which include alkaloids, terpenoids, phenolics and other secondary chemicals. Certain vegetable oils such as canola oil are known to have pesticidal properties. Products based on extracts of plants such as garlic have now been registered in the EU and elsewhere. Topic: Applications. Biopesticides are biological or biologically derived agents that are usually applied in a manner similar to chemical pesticides, but achieve pest management in an environmentally friendly way. With all pest management products, but especially microbial agents, effective control requires appropriate formulation and application. Biopesticides for use against crop diseases have already established themselves on a variety of crops. For example, biopesticides already play an important role in controlling downy mildew diseases. Their benefits include, a zero-day pre-harvest interval C, maximum residue limit, the ability to use under moderate to severe disease pressure, and the ability to use as a tank mix or in a rotational program with other registered fungicides. Because some market studies estimate that as much as 20% of global fungicide sales are directed at downy mildew diseases, the integration of biofungicides into grape production has substantial benefits in terms of extending the useful life of other fungicides, especially those in the reduced risk category. A major growth area for biopesticides is in the area of seed treatments and soil amendments. Fungicidal and biofungicidal seed treatments are used to control soil-borne fungal pathogens that cause seed rots, damping off, root rot and seedling blights. They can also be used to control internal seed-borne fungal pathogens as well as fungal pathogens that are on the surface of the seed. Many biofungicidal products also show capacities to stimulate plant host defense and other physiological processes that can make treated crops more resistant to a variety of biotic and abiotic stresses. Topic: Disadvantages. High specificity, which may require an exact identification of the pest pathogen and the use of multiple products to be used. Although this can also be an advantage in that the biopesticide is less likely to harm species other than the target. Often slow speed of action thus making them unsuitable if a pest outbreak is an immediate threat to a crop. Often variable efficacy due to the influences of various biotic and abiotic factors since some biopesticides are living organisms, which bring about pest – pathogen control by multiplying within or nearby the target pest – pathogen. Living organisms evolve and increase their resistance to biological, chemical, physical or any other form of control. If the target population is not exterminated or rendered incapable of reproduction, the surviving population can acquire a tolerance of whatever pressures are brought to bear, resulting in an evolutionary arms race. Unintended consequences – Studies have found broad-spectrum biopesticides have lethal and nonlethal risks for non-target native pollinators such as Melipona quadrifasciata in Brazil. <laughs> See also